Jorge Martin has taken a massive sprint victory at the 2024 MotoGP Malaysian Grand Prix after title rival Francesco Bagnaia crashed out. After the pair traded blows in a thrilling qualifying session, with Bagnaia taking pole, Martin tipped the scales back in his favor in the 10-lap sprint. Getting the hole shot from second on the grid, Martin led Bagnaia for the first two laps before the reigning champion crashed at turn 9 on the third tour. Suffering his eighth DNF of the year and with Martin comfortably winning the sepping sprint, Bagnaia has now slipped 29 points behind in the standings. Five minutes before lights out, there was a very brief rain shower, though it ultimately came to nothing and the race was run in dry conditions. Martin now just needs to outscore Bagnaia by nine points on Sunday to be crowned world champion. Marc Marquez brushed off a difficult weekend so far to finish second on the Grazzini Run GP23, while Enea Bastianini inherited the final podium spot after his Ducati teammate Bagnaia's crash. Off the line Bagnaia and Martin ran side by side into the first corner, with the latter holding firm on the inside of turn 1. Bagnaia tried to tough it out on the outside to get a run into turn 2, but Martin kept the lead, while Marquez had leapt from 5th to 3rd. Exiting turn 9 on the first lap, Bagnaia had a small twitch on the gas, which gave Martin a few bike lengths of advantage while Marquez loomed large behind the factory Ducati. There was no change on lap 2, while on the third tour Bagnaia didn't come out the other side of turn 9 as he tucked the front on the way in. It gave Martin a 0.9s lead over Marquez, with Bastianini boosted onto the podium as a result. This order never changed to the checkered flag, with Martin 0.913s clear of Marquez at the end, while Bastianini was a further 1.097s adrift. Alex Marquez was fourth on the sister Grazzini GP23, while Fabio Cordero was a fine fifth on the factory Yamaha. Franco Morbidelli was 6th on the Pramac Ducati, with Brad Binder leading the KTM charge in 7th ahead of teammate Jack Miller. Tech 3 Gasca's rookie Pedro Acosta put Miller under immense pressure over the final laps, but couldn't advance on 9th. Marco Bezzecchi was out of the points in 10th on the VR46 Ducati, while Alex Espargaro was the top Aprilia in 12th. Luca Marini took top Honda honors in 15th, while LCR's Johan Zarco retired on lap 8 with a mechanical issue. Andrea Iannone was 19th on his first MotoGP start since 2019 on the second VR46 Ducati, 3.8s clear of Trackhouse Racing's Lorenzo Salvadori and 2.084s behind the other Trackhouse Aprilia of Raul Fernandez. Turn 9 is a corner that has proven difficult all weekend. Alex Espargaro fell there twice on Friday, and Augusto Fernandez crashed there in qualifying. Marc Marquez, who inherited second place from Banyaya when he crashed out, said that the tricky conditions in that corner and Bagnaia's intensity in the opening laps might have been factors in the Italian's crash. I mean, that turn 9 is super critical, Marquez said, having been directly behind Bagnaia when the Italian crashed out of the sepping sprint. How many crashes we see, this type of crash in turn 9, I mean he was pushing, he did what he needed to do and tomorrow again he needs to take a risk and try to win the race because it's his only chance to recover points. When you are in front in a championship, everything is easier to control and to manage. But, Jorge, Martin is doing a very good job. Despite his position directly behind Banyaya when he crashed, Marquez was not able to offer any analysis of why the crash happened. He, needs to explain, Marquez said. I mean, on that breakpoint, believe me, my eyes every lap were going out from the helmet because you are braking super hard and you have enough, work, to feel what is happening with your bike. I see only that he lost the front on the very last part. But, I don't know what happened on the bike. Peko Banyaya suffered a major blow to his 2024 MotoGP title hopes when he crashed out of the Malaysian sprint at Sepang. Banyaya started the sprint on pole position after breaking the lap record in Q2, but title rival Jorge Martin beat him to turn one off the line. Banyaya settled into second place, but Martin was pulling away in the first half of lap three, before Banyaya crashed at turn nine. TV replay showed Banyaya on a slightly tighter line in the middle of turn 9 than either Martin ahead of Marc Marquez behind, his front tire bobbled slightly and then folded. Martin went on to win the sprint, increasing his points lead by a further 12 points, meaning he goes into Sunday's Malaysian Grand Prix 29 points clear of Banyaya in the rider's standing. It means that Martin can be crowned world champion in Malaysia if he outscores Banyaya by 9 points in the Grand Prix. Therefore, if Martin wins on Sunday and Banyaya finishes third or worse, Martin will be champion.
Mark Marquez conceded that he was struggling on Friday at the Malaysian MotoGP. The Sepang International Circuit has seen Marquez win twice in the Premier Class, but has also seen him struggle relative to his performance in other circuits. This has been especially true on Friday at the 2024 edition of the Malaysian Grand Prix, where Marquez, who won only two weeks ago in Phillip Island and who crashed out of second place in Thailand last weekend, narrowly squeezed through to Q2 directly, 0.076 seconds ahead of KTM rookie Pedro Acosta. Today has been difficult, Marquez said following Friday practice in Sepang. I tried to start in an optimistic way, in a positive way, but one more time here in Malaysia we are struggling more than usual. But we need to work more than usual to arrive on a good level. For the time attack I was a little bit far, but for the race pace I'm closer, but not enough. Marquez added, I miss everything. It's a circuit that I'm struggling more than usual. These two circuits in the calendar that I've been struggling at historically, that has been here in Montmelo. Explaining his struggles in Sepang compared to other circuits, Marquez said that the broken humerus he infamously suffered at the 2020 Spanish Grand Prix is at least partly to blame. Normally I was struggling, but I was able to compensate in one mode or another mode, he said. Since my injury, in Jerez 2020, I'm struggling and I cannot compensate anymore. I was struggling already here before the injury, but I could compensate about the physical condition, about pushing more the bike, less in other corners. Now I'm struggling and I need to ride as I feel. If you see, my riding style changed. I'm not overriding the bike, I'm just riding what I feel and that's it. I need to adapt. The race is where I'm struggling, I'm struggling a bit more than in the past. Marquez insisted that his inability to compensate at Sepping this year is not because of the switch from Honda to Ducati last season. It's because of me here in this racetrack, he said. You can see in the past here many Ducatis are fast, even today one GP23, my brother, Alex Marquez, he was faster than me in the time attack, in the race pace we were very equal. Every rider in this grid has some racetracks that are better or worse for his riding style. In addition to the difficulties that were unique to him in Sepang, Marquez joined the rest of the Desmosetisi GP23 riders in being slow in the straights, with the four GP23 riders, Mark Marquez, Alex Marquez, Marco Bezecchi, and Andrea Iannone, all filling the bottom four positions on the top speeds chart in practice. For some reason, already we realized, all the GP23s we are struggling a lot with the hot temperature, Marquez said, referencing last weekend's Thai Grand Prix where the GP23s also missed straight-line performance. In Mandalika it was not like this, but we don't have long straights, here we have long straights, you can see, Marco, Bezecchi, even Andrea, Yanone, Fabio, Dijan Antonio when he was here last week, we are struggling more with the hot temperatures. But Ducati is trying to help us to try to decrease the difference tomorrow.